Hey guys, welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you how to make this awesome top-down shooting game thing. All right, so you're just tank and you can move around and you can shoot projectiles. Um, there are borders so you can't go past them. There are also enemy bullets which can shoot you and the enemies will follow you. Um, there are also these random bushes around um, that you can shoot or hide in them because um, enemy bullets get blocked from them. All right, um, so this is going to be a pretty advanced tutorial. Um, I would say, uh, let me show you actually. You can see that the code is, you know, quite a lot. Um, and there are a couple of sprites, right? So um, I'm probably gonna split this, split this tutorial to, um, let's say three parts around that. Um, so in this tutorial, I'm just gonna teach you how to make our player sprite, which is this bunch here. <laughs> and our projectile sprite all right so um go ahead and create a new project i'm gonna call mine advanced top down shooter and you'll need three sprites called play um tank or player player projectile and our background all right in the background i just um you know got this random dirt background thing um so um first we're going to create two new variables we're going to call them x and Y for the sprite only, all right? And we're also gonna say when green flag clicked forever. We're going to change X by um, key right arrow pressed. Plus, whoops, plus key left arrow pressed times negative one and we're going to multiply the entire thing by let's say three all right um we're just gonna we're just gonna stick that in here we're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna do the same thing for our y right so we're gonna say if key up arrow pressed or key down arrow pressed Great, so if I click the project now, you can see that our variables are changing, which is exactly what we need. And we also want to set X to zero and Y to zero at the start of the project. Next, we're gonna create two more variables. We're gonna call them scroll X for all sprites and scroll Y. All right, so these will be the global variables that um, the player projectile in the background will be controlled by. So we're going to um, say change scroll x by x minus scroll x divided by, um, let's say, 8 or actually 15. And we're going to change our scroll y by the same thing, by y minus scroll y divided by 15 and um, finally we're going to say go to our X X minus scroll X and Y Y minus scroll Y so if I run the project now you can see that our player can you know kind of move up and down right kind of drifting there well this is because of this um, smoothing algorithm here all right I'll talk about this later um, wait probably in another project, but what it basically is is that it calculates the distance and it divides this, the distance by a value so it can slowly drift um, according to the remaining distance. <laughs> that probably didn't make a lot of sense, but um, yeah. And we also want the player to point towards our um, you know, mouse, right? So we're gonna say point towards mouse pointer. All right, mine currently does not because um, you know, if you go in our costumes editor, you can see that my tank is facing downwards. So I actually need to adjust that. So a simple thing like turn 90 degrees should do it. Yay. So now we are actually pointing towards the mouse pointer. Um, you don't have to do this if you're in, in your costume, if in your costumes, um, your tank is like facing this way. All right. Cause that's like what scratch assumes um, you are. All right. So anyway. That's basically all we need for the player in this tutorial, all right, in this tutorial. Next, we're gonna program in our background, all right? 
So um, get the script and we're going to drag it in our background. Then we are going to trash the x and y variables and replace them with zeros. Because, um, how do I say it? Because um, our background is not like a clone or anything. It's just one sprite. And it will be moving according to scroll left and scroll right. It doesn't need its own variable. So we're going to say when clicked forever, go to x minus scroll x and y minus scroll y. So you see now I can actually move the background around which is really nice and creates the scrolling effect thing. All right. Um, one thing you need to keep, keep note of is that in the costumes, you want to draw a really big um, background like this. And if I set that size to 100, you can see that um, it's actually pretty small. So how are you going to scroll like this? Oh, by the way, we also want the background to go to back layer, right? So go to back layer. So you can see our background is really small. So how can we make it larger? Well, we simply set the size to a larger value. But there's a problem. And the problem is that um, Scratch doesn't allow you to set um, you know, um, these giant um, sprites into really big um, sizes. See, if I put 300 here, you can see that its real value is only 150. Well, um, this is because Scratch limits how big you how big your sprite can be according to how big your costume is. So all we need to do is that we're gonna create a second costume, or I already made one, it's called costume one, and it's just this really tiny dot, all right? So we're going to switch costume to costume one at the start, set size to 300, then we're going to switch costume to our dirt, all right? How this works is that it first switches costume to costume one, right? Then it says size to 300, so it's the 300 percentage off that dot. And finally, we're going to switch costume back to dirt. So that's kind of this size hack thing that allows you to surpass the um, limit. That's how I made this product work. All right. And um, finally, for this um, tutorial, I'm going to add in our borders, right? So right now, if I go here, you can see that um, it's blank, right? It's empty because, you know, I've reached the end. So. I'm just going to get this um, value right here. And we're going to say right here, if our scroll y is less than, let's say, 350. So I'm just going to round that. Less than negative 350. Then we're going to set our scroll y to negative 350. Now this is good because now we can't go past the border. So if you go here, you see that we stop moving, you know, right? And only our player moves. Um, we can do the same thing if we want to go up, right? Because eventually we might reach the, board, reach the border at the top too, right? So if I just keep on going there, you can see that I'm reaching the border, right? So I can actually just duplicate this and switch it around. Um, if scroll y is bigger than, let's say, 350, then set scroll y to 350. <laughs> so see, now we kind of, you know, don't move over up there. Um, we're also, we're also going to do the same thing for our scroll x. Um, let's see what it is. When it's less than, let's say, negative 475, so... We're just going to say if scroll x is less than negative 475, we're going to set it to negative 475. And if it's larger than 475, we're going to set it to negative 475. Oh, wait, 475. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, let me change the values in here too to scroll x. So you see, now we already have a very basic scrolling, you know, game, right? But the only thing you have is the background to add the player. So in the next tutorial, we're going to program in our player projectile, which is currently empty. And we'll possibly add in some enemies if we have time, um, you know, next time. So um, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for part two.